The knapsack problem is defined as follows. We are given n different types of items, each of which has a size, si, and a value, vi. We are also given a knapsack which has capacity c. Since this is the integer knapsack problem, there is going to be a restriction that says that the sizes of each item are integers, and so is the capacity of the knapsack. The goal of the problem is to pack the items into the knapsack such that we maximize the sums of the values of the items placed in the knapsack, and such that we respect the capacity of the knapsack. In this particular variant of the knapsack problem, we're going to assume that it's okay to use multiple instances of a single type of item. So suppose, for instance, one of our items is a toothbrush, we can use several copies of a toothbrush in our knapsack. There also exists a variant of the knapsack problem in which you can use at most one copy of each item, but that variant is slightly more difficult, so we'll focus on this one first. Since we're going to develop a dynamic programming algorithm to solve this problem, we have to first decompose it into subproblems of the same form. That is, we have to express the computation of the optimal way to fill a knapsack of capacity C in terms of smaller subproblems. And the natural way to come up with a smaller subproblem in this case is to just try and find the optimal way of filling a smaller knapsack. So to more precisely define our subproblems, let's let m of j denote the maximum possible value one can pack into a knapsack of just capacity j. Our algorithm is going to compute these values in sequence from the bottom up. In other words, it's going to compute m of 1, m of 2, and so on, until eventually it computes the optimal value one can pack into a capacity C knapsack. And at every step, it's going to compute a new value of m of j based on the previous values of m of 1 through j minus 1 that we've already computed. In order to do this computation, we need to be able to write a formula which expresses the value of m of j in terms of optimal solutions to smaller subproblems, that is, m of values smaller than j. In this case, we get the following formula. We can explain this formula in terms of the picture I've just drawn as follows. If it turns out that the jth location in the knapsack ends up being empty in the optimal solution, then that means that the optimal way to fill this knapsack is going to be just to fill the first j minus 1 positions in the knapsack optimally. And this corresponds to the subproblem m of j minus 1. The other alternative is that in the optimal solution, perhaps the jth slot is actually occupied by some item i. In this case, the optimal way to fill a knapsack such that it ends in item i will be to fill first a capacity j minus si knapsack optimally that corresponds to the m of j minus si in my formula here, and then to just add in the ith item at the end, which corresponds to the vi here. I get the value of the ith item if I do so. Now, if the jth slot in my optimal solution is occupied by some item, I'm not sure which item that is, so what I want to do is I want to maximize over all the possible items the value that I would get if my knapsack were to end in that particular item. So to recap, this part of my maximization tells me the optimal value I can get if I fill a capacity j knapsack without using the jth location, and this part of the formula tells me the maximum value I can obtain if I fill a capacity j knapsack and use the jth location. And certainly one of these two alternatives must be the case for the optimal solution. So if I take the best of the two, then I'm going to actually find the value of the optimal way to fill a capacity J knapsack. So we're now finished. We have a dynamic programming algorithm that solves the integer knapsack problem. What's the running time going to be of our algorithm? Well, it's going to be computing optimal solutions to C different subproblems. And for each of these, it may potentially require a maximization over n types of items of something that takes order one time to evaluate. So the total running time of the algorithm is going to be order of n times c.
The only other issue that I'm going to address really briefly is how to actually reconstruct the optimal solution. Notice that if we just run our algorithm, we'll have at the end, stored in m of c, the value of the optimal solution. But we won't have any means of reconstructing the actual items that went into that optimal solution. So what we want to do here is for every subproblem, m of j, we want to store a back pointer to the previous subproblem on which m of j's value is based. That is, if this m of j minus 1 term was the maximum, then I want to store a back pointer to j minus 1. Otherwise, I want to store a back pointer to j minus si for whatever item it was that was the maximizing item for that particular subproblem. By tracing back the back pointers, starting at position c, I can actually then reconstruct all of the items that went into the optimal solution. And this is described more in the textbook.